The New Jersey Area Samaj Humanitarian Organization has come to the rescue of a poverty-stricken family. Janelle Williams reports. Poverty may be defined as the shortage of common things such as food, clothing, shelter and safe drinking water, all of which determine the quality of life. Although the most severe poverty is in the developing world, there is evidence of poverty in every region of the world. More than one billion people, one-sixth of the world's population, live in extreme poverty on less than US one dollar a day. This is a daunting fact that us as humans and citizens of the planet Earth have to come to terms with. However, in Guyana, it is not every day one comes across a family suffering from extreme poverty and living on the brink of extinction. It is true that poverty does not discriminate and affects persons of all religious, ethnic and political background. Right here in Region 6 resides a family so stricken by poverty that their home, the place which is supposed to provide warmth, comfort and protection from the elements of weather, is worse than a shack. Up until yesterday, 69 years old Gladys and her son David Majamutu were living in a derelict shamble that was not fit for animal inhabitants, much less human. Fortunately for the family of two, after waiting for help from promised parties, they received a miracle through the New Jersey Area Samaj Humanitarian Organization. Speaking to Channel 8 News, Pandit Sugrim, a representative of the organization, said that he was approached by a gentleman who brought the plight of the family to his attention. Afternoon, I was at the program out of the church and I was approached by a gentleman by the name of Ganesh and he said well I want you to take a look but when I get here it was all dark so I get back in the morning and I looked at the project I looked at the house inside and it was inhumane I have traveled to so many countries I have never ever seen something of this nature that I have witnessed and what we are embarking on here today um, as a humanitarian organization I want to say to the general public that yes we are here and will make a difference in the life of this family and if there's any other family that is in this kind of a situation please do not hesitate to contact us we are here to make a difference as a Hindu organization as I have said we do not discriminate we work with people of all faith um, and it's a very sad story to say that there's so many Hindu organization across region 6 and I don't know if any one of them was aware of the situations that this family was living in and it's a very sad story. What else can I say to you? But we are here to make a difference and give them a second chance of life to turn it around. According to Pandit Sugrim, after viewing the condition in which the family live, he was moved to action and sought assistance of relevant authorities. Of course, from the contractors, uh, they have partnership with us. And after they come and they see what is happening and the situation where the family is living in, they were more than willing to donate their time free of cost. So we will be purchasing the materials, and the labor will be free on behalf of the of the contractor. Um, Mr. Tony Amorali was graceful enough to help us to bring this project to its full, uh, due fulfillment. So, we as seen. The Majimutus resided in this poor excuse of a dwelling with the majority of the floorboards and walls rotten or non-existent, the zinc sheets serving as a roof completely worn out. No sleep, no sleep when rain fall. Those were the words of Gladys Majimutu when interviewed by Channel 8 News. You know, we're really punished and we don't have happiness and we feel so glad and so joy that these, they come to look after it, right? When rain fall in night, we don't get sleep. We don't get sleep, it was around on the chair all night. Got to spread plastic on the bed. How much night the rain keep on pouring, I can't sleep. We had a table in the house, my son does sleep under the table just not to get wet, my dear daughter. How is it you guys end up living in such a house? Well, you see they're promising and promising and promising, so we keep on waiting. Who keep promising? Well, many people appear so bad, you know, I don't like to, you know how. You know, they're promising, but maybe they never get through with what stuff they got to get, you know. So we got to wait on them. But um, Pandit has come up, you know, and so everything. Um, you said that you guys have been living here for like three years. Yeah, uh, four years, right. Where did you guys live before then? Just here, but it wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad? No, it wasn't so bad. So it's only you and your son, you don't have any other children? No, I had two more one die. Okay, and no other family members that could help you? Here, no, I don't ask family members. For help. I don't ask them anything. And what about your neighbors? Well, my neighbors, I'm okay, but you can ask them for a sister to do something in here. 
Miss Sikki had a day, they look after me. You understand me, living very happy, very good. Upon visiting the house situated at Reliance Kanji, it was incomprehensible to this reporter as to why an apparently able-bodied male would himself and mother live in such an environment. As such, yours truly sought answers. David Majimutu, when questioned by Channel 8 News, declared that he had no choice. He disclosed that he had spent his entire life in the house and that it was only about four years ago it began to deteriorate. He further added that he did not seek assistance because he was under the impression that his friends, through his job, would fulfill their promise and assist him, which obviously failed to materialize. Well, I had no choice. In this condition, for quite a number of years. You mentioned that you had no choice, but you're employed, right? Have you tried seeking help from other organizations, for instance, Kapoor Not really, no. Why? I really can't say why, but I did not seek assistance from Kapoor Kapoor. I did not really go, I did not really seek assistance. I was trying to get assistance from some friends and so Not from any NGOs or whatever it is. Let me, let me get people move. Region 6 Chairman Mr. Zulfikar Mustafa, when appraised of the situation, complimented the humanitarian organization for their generosity and pledged the assistance of his administration in making the new home for the Majumutus a reality. As a matter of fact, for this project, only yesterday we have had this initial meeting and I have asked the NDC at <coughs> Canefield Enterprise to donate a day of free labor here so that we can have the um, place prepared. For this project. Additionally, when asked by Channel 8 News, Mr. Mustafa said that he was unaware that persons were living in such dilapidated homes in his region. Meanwhile, the Ghana Women in Development, who is currently working in collaboration with the New Jersey Area Samaj Humanitarian Organization, has promised to help provide household articles to the family after the construction of the house. The house is being constructed at a cost of US $6,000 and is expected to be completed in 10 days. Reporting from Reliance Kanji, I'm Janelle Williams.